I mean, Alice Cooper, I've been playing with for years. He's, he, he knows so much about music, and he's played with so many people. Every time I play with him, I just quiz him about music. Alice got super sober a long time ago, and he just, he said golf saved his life. By the way, he plays almost every day still. That's amazing. What are, what are some other awesome Alice Cooper moments? You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I am Will Meldman, here with my beautiful co-host, Brock O'Hearn. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Tommy. I was like, that's a great intro right there, man. <laughs> no, I, you know, I come up with different adjectives every time for Brock, and it's so easy because they're all so lovely and positive. We are here at the Madison Club, live in La Quinta, California, with the legendary... 40-year professional golfer on the PGA Tour and Champions Tour. One of the greatest dudes ever from Las Vegas, Nevada, Tommy Armour III. Thank you, boys. I'm glad to be here. Always any Discovery property. They ask me, what's your favorite Discovery property? And I go, the one I'm at. The one I'm at. <laughs> there you go. Always present. Always yes. mindful. Yes. How long have you guys known each other? We were talking about this today. 2001. Because that's when I met your dad. Okay, I definitely want to talk about this. So you were very instrumental with Pops meeting Jerry Weintraub and a lot of the people in LA. And that was around the same time that you were going to Dantana's and seeing Craig. You I've been going to Dantana's for 30 years, 35 years. I've known Craig when he was, a, uh, you know, from 1990, I've known Craig. Wow. That's pretty cool. Right. So, I mean, you literally like showed dad the ropes. You were like. Well, I didn't necessarily show him the ropes. I, uh, he did good on his own, but uh, we got him some good intros and he ran with it. That's a good, I, I just appreciate that description, I yeah, guess. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he took the ball and ran. <laughs> he took the ball and ran. <laughs> you, you can lead the horse to water, right? For sure. And he drank. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> How were those early days though? Like who, who were you guys rolling with and how, you know, was it similar with the hideaway where you met pops and like developing that? And well, I, I mean, I really literally met him from through Mike Abbott, who used to be with discovery for a long time. And <clears throat> he called me and said, could you possibly get me two tickets for the premiere of oceans 11? And I happened to be staying with Jerry that, that, you know, during the premiere out in the guest house, which you've spent many a nights at. And just for the record, people listening, Jerry Weintraub, producer of Ocean's Eleven. 12 and 13, yes. But <clears throat> I was um, staying there with them, and uh, Mike Abbott called me on Monday midday, and I was, he's like, uh, is it possible for two tickets? And I said, <laughs> I mean, it's probably up to, at that point, maybe one of the biggest premieres, maybe one of the biggest ever. And uh, so... I went to Jerry and I go, uh, is it possible to get Mike Millman two tickets for the uh, premiere on Friday night? And he goes, you got to be fucking kidding me, aren't you? <laughs> he goes, you know how many people are asking me for tickets? I go, well, yeah, I go, right. And uh, so then the next morning I was with him and uh, it was about like six in the morning. And I go, you should really reconsider this because, you know, Melman, he's building a lot of golf courses and you love golf. And I think, you know, this will help you facilitate you getting to golf courses and you can play some golf and, you know, and, uh, you know, Jerry likes those kind of situations where he's, uh, you know, welcome opened arm. And so uh, he goes, I, why you don't bug me, quit bugging me. And I said, I, I really, I think it's something you should really consider. So he, he went off, we went on our way that day and later that night, you know, we were eating dinner and I go, I go, really should, he goes, quit it, kid. <laughs> and he goes, quit, quit with this Mike right. Melman guy. And I go, trust me, I think it'll be worth, you know, it'll be worth your. So the next day it's Thursday and, uh, and I see him in the morning, he goes, okay, I had two people cancel and you got two tickets for this Melman guy. And I said, oh, fantastic, you know, and so the, I called Mike Abbott and, and then uh, Mike, I met Mike that night at the uh, premiere and uh, 
So he came and he looked great. He was in a tux and did all had all the business. And that's we rare, by the way, for the record. Like my dad wears shorts and t-shirts to board meetings, and it's for like sure. almost pretty notorious for it. Well, you know, he he knew he had to come with the tux that night, and he, he looked good in it. And uh, I met him, and we, we, did, we we did that whole thing, and then we went to Dan Tana's afterwards. And then uh, we were at Dan Tana's for a little while, and then we went to Forty Deuce after that. What is Forty Deuce? It's a, uh, it's a, it was a Ivan Kane's. He had kind of this cabaretish kind of thing, kind of a small venue, but ca uh, cabaret dancers and sexy. It wasn't a strip joint, but it was sexy, you know. And uh, it was a spot. I mean, people were, you know, line out front was, you know. But I knew Ivan for a long time, and uh, we rolled right in, and um, you know, that was the start of my relationship with. Mr. Melman. It's funny to think about, I mean, I owe Jerry almost all of the credit for my career in entertainment, you know, working on that first job ever on Ocean's 13 um, and all that. And like, obviously we've spent so much time together and I have so much love and respect for you. Um, Ditto. And oh man, but like those Thank God those two people canceled, right? Like you never think about in life. Like, I mean, who knows what would have happened if they wouldn't have canceled. Right. You know, I mean, it, you know, Mike might have been like, you know, who knows? Yeah, and Jerry's not with us anymore, no. but his son Michael is playing in this tournament who yep. I love and admire Gave on the him same a hug level. this morning. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And like that's, you kind of were talking about like the Discovery family and that's really what it is. And it I, is. I met Michael in 1987. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's when I met Jerry, actually, here in the desert. And uh, I, was, I was playing in the Bob Hope Desert Classic, and I was looking at my tee times, and I saw the second round at Tamarisk. I, was, I said, said, Jerry Weintraub. And I said, God damn, that's Jerry Weintraub. You know, because I grew up in Vegas. You know, my dad moved there in 63. So, I mean, I knew the Alva stuff, the Frank Sinatra and I mean, it was Concerts West, it was Jerry Weintraub, he did all the shows, you know, I, we bought concert tickets, it was from, you know, Concerts West, and that was Jerry Weintraub. And I was like, all right. So we go to the first tee, and um, I go, hi, hey, Mr. Weintraub, he goes, call me Jerry. And I go, look, I'm Jerry, Tommy Armour, and he goes, hey, I know who you are. And Hell yeah. <laughs> and so we walk down the first hall, and, you know, going down the second hall, he goes, you know, I'm a big time movie producer, and I go, Mr. Weintraub, I know exactly, <laughs> he goes, Jerry, and I go, Sorry, Jerry. I know exact. I know exactly who you are from Elvis Sinatra, and I, he goes, oh, "Really?" And I go, "Yeah, but I grew up in Vegas." And he goes, "Oh, okay." And so, about on the tenth hole, we're going along, and he's having a good day, and these, uh, you know, things are good for Jerry that day, and I'm playing pretty good. And about on the sixteenth hole, he goes, "You know, I like you, kid." And I go, "I, I like you too, Mister Mister Wine." He goes, "Jerry," and I go, "Okay, Jerry, I, I like you too." And so walking up the 18th hall, he looked at me, he goes, where are you staying? And I go, I'm staying in some dump over here and, you know, wherever I was, Palm Desert or something. He goes, why don't we do this? Why don't, when you get done, why don't you go get your luggage and then come stay with me the rest of the week? And I said, yes, sir. I'll, I'll you know, I won't, won't take me long. <laughs> so I went to my hotel, packed up, and I think I was at his house about 6.30 and uh he cooked steaks that night, and uh, Jerry cooked the steaks. And uh, you know, and uh, I've traveled the world, and you know, he was kind of like a you know my second father to me for the rest of my life. Jerry actually cooked the steaks. Jerry cooked the steaks. That's like my cereal story. And it's like you, it's rare to actually find him cooking and doing that. That's incredible, Jerry. He did. He had that in his personality, right? He had that like come stay with me. It's all good. And like, make you feel very welcome. Right. As like, gracious as it could. When, every time you walked into his house, you felt, unless he was mad at you about something in particular, in which over the years at times he was mad at me about a couple of things here and there, but you know, we got past all those things. It was mostly my doing. Well, I think Craig had a few moments like that on our other podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Then my, your dad has too, you know, yeah, and, you yeah. know and so, and then we, you know, and, he was beautiful. I mean, from that day on, I mean, J Jane and, um, you know, and Susie and everybody, I mean, they they were 
always great to me. Every time I was around him, he was gracious. I mean, he let me, uh, went to Malibu in his place. I mean, I'm sitting in his pat on his deck. You know, we're both in his jacuzzi, his personal. I mean, just you know, just per, and he's like, oh, you know, and, and on Beverly Hills, go in and take a steam in my shower in my bathroom, and you know, I mean, he was that guy, you know. Yeah, and Mikasa uh, Sukasa, definitely a hundred percent, and uh, you know, and. Uh, in, the, in that book, uh, you know, he left me a great tribute. He said, some of my greatest days were on the golf course with Tommy Armour III. So, really? Yeah. How did I, I got to look that up. That's really, yeah. I mean, I totally believe that. You know what I mean? Oh, we've had some great times. I mean, you know, the first time I went to George's house in Italy, we, we all. Como? Your, yeah, Como, your dad, Jerry and I, we all flew over there and it was. Uh, okay, we can't just skip past this one. We got to try to, <laughs> <laughs> what you can tell us. Let's hear what you can tell us. Well, about you that. know, it was just, you know, I mean, George lives very civilized, you know, he's, everything's really nice. It's, uh you know, Oleander. I think it's Casa Oleander or, or Villa Oleander. It's one of the. It's one of the. I think it may be Villa Oleander is what's the name of his place there. And you know, we got there, and I mean, breakfast was at nine, and dinner was at nine, and I mean, it was. Uh, you know, it was. I, I drank a lot of wine that night. I think I drank them out of a certain brand or that week. And <laughs> a little Opus One. I, I know it was some Italian, some Italian one. I can't even remember what it was, but. I, I drank a lot of wine that week, and um, yeah, it was um, it was. And we had dinners. At, uh, got the Negro, the Black Cat, and it was. It was um, and your dad, I mean, uh, your dad was great. We went out to a nightclub one night in Sardinia after we left there. And Sardinia the, is absolutely beautiful. It is, and that's uh, you know we were out at on uh, somebody's boat and we were looking back at Sardinia and that's where your dad kind of got the vision for El Dorado. Really? Uh-huh. No way. This is why I love the podcast. <laughs> I get to learn so much about like places I grew up and have been to so many times, but it, like actually sitting down with you guys and talking. He, he looked back yeah. up on the hills and we were out, uh, it kind of, because it was kind of looked like El Dorado. It's kind of went up and it was deserty and it was a bank that kind of went up and and, you know, if you go look at El Dorado now, it kind of looks like Sardinia. Yeah, kind of built into the side of the hill. Built, and it goes up the side of the hill, yeah. Especially from the water, like when you're on a boat well, in that's the water. What, that's yeah. What I'm, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. If you get out in the water and look, it looks like Sardinia. That's incredible. Your dad and I had a ball that night after the, at the premiere, and so we got together soon after that. And the next thing you know, we're, I'm going to the Discovery property, and I've, I've basically been an ambassador for Discovery Land Company for 20, since that night. Yeah, since I was... Now, now, I like, work, now I work for Discovery Land Company after my golf career. So, you know, and your dad's been nothing but gracious and unbelievable to me over the years and my family. And anytime I ask him something, he's been top shelf. What are you doing, uh, like, sales stuff? And, uh, you know, just kind of helping him at properties, just kind of, you know... Uh, golf uh, consulting? Go yeah, or? the ambassador that basically has given me the label. That's what it says on my cards. And, you know, it's when somebody comes in, to, you know, like an, uh, comes uh, Thomas Keller comes in to play golf and stuff, I go out and play with him. And Is that the, the French the, Laundry? Yes, chef? exactly. I mean, in Portugal last summer I did that with, and, you know, and Harry Styles came in and played golf. And we play with those guys and make sure they have a good day and, you know, and... It's, uh, you know, from start to finish. And, uh, you know, he's closed a lot of real estate after I've played with guys. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely believe that. I mean, dude, <laughs> playing with you, I mean, you are, to, for lack of a better analogy, cooler than the other side of the pillow. And I love being around you. And, like, this is probably our 10th member guest tournament that you and I have played in as partners. And um, I was thinking that about 10. I, that's what I was I was thinking. And the first one we ever played, obviously right here, here, very first tournament ever at Madison. Um, and it's crazy to think about how time flies, but the people we've met in between that span and like, I, I'm just beyond excited and grateful to be doing this again with you. We had a great round today. John Elway crushed us today on the course. I mean, he was hitting it perfectly. Um, his, his 
uh, partner uh, was Brad. Brad. Yeah. Brad, who, you know, was instrumental in your dad at Casamigos and uh, making that all happen. And, well, uh, well they, he, he was getting strokes, but he'd Brad's like, he, been my partner in a couple of member guests. You guys have played together. Uh, we, we, he had a putt to win pins and fins with me. Oh, they're cheating on mm. me, but that's okay. Uh huh. That's well, He's, you were, you know, you were busy at that. You had a girlfriend or something, maybe. Like that. <laughs> Girlfriends, man, always take. <laughs> <laughs> so, crushed it today on the course, having a blast. How do you think Madison Club has evolved from the hideaways development? How would you compare the two courses? In the real world, if you're at either place, you're you're having a hell of a day, but. You know, how I rate the Madison Club is, you know, from start to finish, the, the moment you drive into the gate till you leave, there's not a lot of better places on earth. And then Hideaway is, I mean, it's, I loved coming here early on. I loved going to the Hideaway and uh, the clubhouse there is cool. I, I mean, I like the two golf courses, they're, they're challenging and, and I, you know, it's both places are a slice of heaven to me. I mean, I totally agree. It's tough to kind of rate them or talk about the differences. It's I'm just like a happy blonde or a brunette. You know? Yeah, right, right. Chocolate <laughs> or vanilla, right? right like, chocolate or vanilla. Or <laughs> um, and are you a are you a big music guy? Well, you know, I, of course, I've been going to a lot of live concerts my whole life, and uh, yeah. I mean, I obviously knew that because you play the best tunes out on the golf course and you have such an eclectic mix of like, here's some like smooth house and then let's play a little rock and roll. And then the, we, uh, Brock got me into stagecoach. When, yeah. when was your first stagecoach? Because that, you got me into it and I switched from Coachella to stagecoach. I mean, how long has it been going on? It's, it's, it's probably close to a decade, if not that. I'd say now. it's pretty close to a decade yeah. stagecoach. I think I went to maybe the first one. Uh, or, or something like, because I remember it's, <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't afford a hotel, they couldn't get an RV, <laughs> so I slept in the truck and we had some really long, crazy nights. You didn't um, sleep much though. No, no sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> you just parked the truck somewhere. Exactly. Right, right. We parked in the lot, and then uh, <laughs> I remember we we went out the night and we got into the RV section, which is where everyone was really partying, having fun, and it was a little crazier back in the day than it is now when it first started. Right, and. I don't know what happened, but I lost all my friends and I somehow <laughs> made it back to the truck right before sunrise. And I get in and I'm like, remember, I was so drunk and I'm like nervous. I'm going to get a DUI even just because I'm in the car and I'm, right. like, I'm not even driving it. Right. You know? So I like hid the keys somewhere and <laughs> right. I was laying down all comfortable. I promise I'm not driving. I hadn't seen any of my friends in probably three, four hours at this point, right? Next thing I know, <laughs> next thing I know, I'm right about to fall asleep. Someone knocks on my door and I've been thinking about cops the whole time, even though I'm you know, right. just trying to sleep. Someone knocks on the door. I freak out. I'm like, I'm about to go to jail. Here we go. I look over. It's my buddy in a like hooded robe cape or something like that. <laughs> I have no idea where he gets it from. He's got two handles in his hands and he's like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Six in the morning. Um, so Put yes. A little, ran a little water over your face and yeah, got going, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the day started again. Um, but that was uh, when I first started. Now it's, you know, being coming with you or for your first time coming, Will didn't listen to country before and uh -huh. now he enjoys it well, as it was much. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my mom would play me a lot of country and I always had tons of respect for it. Yeah. It was more of like, holy shit, stagecoach is awesome. Yeah. And like, which really just refueled. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, and yeah. then finding new artists there, you know, going to con con uh, bigger concerts when there's right. a lot of people, you find people that you right. are like, like us with the revivalists, you know, first time at Jazz Fest. Um, that was a lot of fun our first time hearing it and now we've seen them in LA and, and we're big fans but um, mm -hmm. have you ever been to Jazz yeah. Fest in New Orleans? of course dude yeah. we, we went there with the 15 times no fucking wow. way yeah so we went with uh, the Thompsons mm -hmm. uh, Michael and they always and had Tyler. the New Orleans tournament on the PJ Tour the same week oh that's amazing it was always oh. it was always the same week yeah so it was what a great th combo yeah dude yeah. I mean yeah. it was like yeah. I lucked out uh, we, that sounds. I remember going around, yeah, walking around with the Thompsons, and we're we're watching Dave Matthews Band, and then we're popping over to Snoop Dogg, and then we're going over to like yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers, like, a, and then you're pop, you're eating a po' boy on the way over, and just the culture and all. It's so amazing how much music is in that city outside yeah. of that concert, you know, just walking around. Yeah. 
And then before Stevie Wonder. That was a bad shoe week. I had to, you got to wear bad shoes in New Orleans because yeah. you can't yeah. wear good shoes because nah. they're, they're going to get even, trashed. Yeah. Even boots, <laughs> yeah. right? Like get some boots or something. <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah. wear... Yeah, you got to wear tough, sturdy shoes. <laughs> That's for damn sure. But yeah, this random band opened up for Stevie Wonder that we were like, okay, we're a little early for Stevie. Like, let's check him out. The lead singer looks like Sideshow Bob. He's super tall, skinny with the, you know, curly hair poking out everywhere. Um, Simpsons reference. Um, but no, and then we're, he just starts jamming, dude. And like, yeah. we're like, this is music. Like, I love being at a place where you can find new music that you're really into. And like right. we, we liked him so much, they came to the Hollywood Bowl. We made sure to go see him at the Hollywood Bowl, you know? Uh -huh. yeah. Like, I love, yeah. That's the Revivalist? Or? The Revivalist, yes. yeah. The Revivalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highly, highly recommend. All right. Yeah, I remember, uh, I think they were, they might have been a little bit newer of a band at the time, not yes. as big as they are now. And uh, just seeing them run out in the crowd, I was like, I was like, how does a lead singer run out in the middle of a crowd and not get like destroyed right uh -huh. now? And, and it, it was just, Jet, the Jazz Fest crowd and then the energy there. And, and it's a very unique, different experience that I think uh, everyone should I've check out. I've never been to Stagecoach. Stagecoach okay. is great. Well, how about we just, all three of us and Spencer, shout out. We come back to this house, stay here and go to Stagecoach. Sounds like a good deal to me. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> and oh, I'm not yeah. a huge country guy. I appreciate it, but I just don't know a lot of it. But I, you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, Brock can help you. He, yeah. like he helped that's, me. That's, that was, yeah, <laughs> I got you. I got you, Tommy. Okay. But that's the thing compared to a concert like Coachella and then you have Stagecoach. Coachella has a lot of different music and vibes and energy yeah and people. I'm, I'm okay not doing coachella yeah yeah, yeah. I, but, i've done it twice and it was i'm good yeah I, we went the last time and it was it was underwhelming i would say you know i feel like uh, you and best, i had at more best. fun at best yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we walked way longer than we needed to man. way way longer yeah yeah but stagecoach has the entire crowd is the same crowd and it's all people that you know they just want to enjoy themselves and they, a lot of them love the music i heard it's so. just one stage to their Will yeah, was more, telling me. Yeah, where it's not as Coachella, big. it's like you got you know different sounds coming from yeah. everywhere, and, stuff. and that was the problem too. Is like if there was in the lineup, if there's actually people you wanted to see, yeah. they, they would sometimes be playing at the same time, yeah. or you couldn't make it in time, or it was just yeah, it's a lot. I yeah. think Coachella should cut the entire list of people in half. Like bands, right? Could, yeah. Like get it more focused. And either have people. two stages or just one stage, but not yep. you know just yeah. You know, it's like that uh, you know festival in Austin. The same. It's ACL just, or AC, yeah. yeah, Austin City Limits. Yeah, it's it's just a, I was one and done there too. It was just walking for days and just yeah, you know. Well, they're all better than Firefest. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. I do like the uh, EDC in Vegas, so. So EDC is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The only thing about EDC is driving into the motorway because it's one road and it took us, I'm sure you get like a helicopter or no, something. No, no, I but, drive in there. Yeah, yeah. But I know the guys that own the raceway and stuff and, and literally See, I, I drive. there was some connection. I, well, I drive, I wait till, you know, where the rush hour is over and then I drive in and I got, um, these two guys that pick me up in a golf cart. So wherever I park, and uh, a vroom, and I'm, I'm back there quick, and then, you know, I watch. I don't stay till you know, the sun breaks out. And so, <laughs> so I leave, and it's easy exit, too. A golf cart right at home for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's but, perfect. I mean, they come and scoop you, and, I mean, it's it's... Yeah. That sounds like the setup, dude. Yeah, that's the only way. And, and that's A lot cool, of people, though. I've never done the helicopter in, but that sounds, I mean, I keep, I see them flying, I go, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Morton always tells us about that. Yeah, Morton yeah. will get choppered in sometimes, right? Yeah. Right. Well, he, I mean, he's, you know, yeah, he's there to play. He's, yeah. he's there to do it. No, but absolutely. I like EDS. I mean, it's a freak show, but you know, <laughs> or EDC. EDC. I mean, EDC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's got it brings people from all over there doing just like I mean, you know, walking around town. It, like I that, go you know? there to look at the people. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's it's amusing to me. It is. People right. come up with all sorts of costumes <laughs> and crazy shit, and, and you'll see little tribes. They all got the same flag, and they're all like, yeah. you know, <laughs> running around. I'm like, hey, okay, there we go. There go the yellow and green flag people. <laughs> we, for stagecoach, we obviously used Brock as like our pillar. If, if 
if anyone get lost, just look for look Brock. For Brock. I There'll be it. people, you know, around saying hi and introducing themselves to him. You know, but, 6'10 with the hat and the boots on, so yep. easy to find. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, your fans are so great, man. Like, you have fans from all different types of stuff, and they come up, and it's pretty crazy to think about, like, how sweet you are with them and how many people there are from different things. And I'm, I'm going to stop making you feel uh, <laughs> uncomfortable by complimenting you, but it's nah. really cool. Cause even at festivals and all that, you can see like all different types of love. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think I'm with Tommy too. Like I enjoy people watching and I enjoy meeting people too. And so if, if regardless if it's a fan or not, they're people, you know, just like we are. And, and yeah. um, I enjoy just, you know, like I don't feel, I just, I'm lucky I could do something cool in my profession, you know, and I, maybe I'm not even where I want to be, but I'm having a good time along the way. And if there's people that enjoy that, I'm grateful for it, you know, so. A very famous guy in the 80s, I'm not going to say who it was, I, I was like watching him and he was like really nice to these people, signing autographs and stuff. And I go, I go, that was really nice of you. And he goes, it's when they quit asking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they quit asking. Have you had any, I don't want to pick the word here, but like what's a, what is like your experience been like with autographs and fans and, and I all sign that every your one. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. It's like, I, 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 that when that guy told me early on in my golf career, it stuck with me. And it's like, he's right. When people yeah. quit asking for your autograph it means you're kind of irrelevant. Yep. It's, or or you're gotten a bad label or so you know something. Yeah. So I've always been very gracious and nice to people, and you know. So, I mean that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you you know it's you never know who it's going to affect or how that's going to affect that person. They they can go on to be the next pro. And you know, you know like, in my forty years, I hear the, yeah, I was fourteen in Greensboro, and you threw me a golf ball, and you know, and this is like they're thirty two. Wow. And, you know, he's like. You know, I kept that. I still have the golf ball. It's on my, and it's like, you know, you get a lot of those. You, know, yeah. you were so nice. You signed my program in uh, Tulsa and, you know. And, yeah. And so, you know. I mean. It's that, good mojo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. feel good, right? The yeah. karma's coming back. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm, you know, hearing how much you love music and uh, has there been any times where you were shocked by people that you got to maybe play golf with that were musicians uh, and, and who that might be? Yeah, when you say shocked, you like, mean by like you might have been a fan of them, and and then you ended up playing with them or something like that. Oh, well, I before mean, before really yeah. meeting. Them. Let me see. Let me think real quick. Um, yeah, I guess probably the uh, one of the first guys we had this um, MTV rock and roll thing, and uh, I was paired with Tommy Lee. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that was the first time I had ever. And then it was a two day thing. And the next day I was paired with Sebastian Bach. So oh, it was wow. like, and that was like early in my golf career. And it was like, and these guys were out there just rock, have, you know, having, uh, it wasn't MTV. It was hard rock. Okay. It was hard nice. rock. It wasn't MTV. It was hard rock. And it was in Florida and stuff. And they were having a, and I said, yeah, these guys are cool. And, you know, we had a great time. And they, you know, they were, didn't really play that much golf, but they were having a ball and it yeah. was it was a fun couple of days. So that was one of my starts to like, you know, really hardcore rockers. But I've over the times I've played with a lot of them yeah, now. Yeah. I mean those two of the best right there. Right. That's, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean then they're both couldn't have been nicer. I mean I love hearing that too. Yeah. You you know, you listen to people for a long time and then you get to meet them and it's like Hell yeah, you just have a good time. They I mean, Alice thing. Cooper, I've been playing with for years. He yeah. couldn't be sweet. And he's like, he, he knows so much about music and he's played with so many people. Every time I play with him, I just quiz him about music. Did That's you ever cool. play here? And he goes, oh, yeah. I, and he, I mean, he really, he knows R&B in depth and has played with everybody and I always quiz. Uh, he's like just a, a, a fountain of information r&b and quizzes with alice cooper that's interesting oh yeah r&b i mean he's uh yeah he's i mean he goes deep into it because cool. i lived in detroit for a couple of years and i went in a deep dive in motown and really because i've always liked r&b and i when i lived there i went down there and the funk brothers and 
deep dive and all that stuff. Hell and yeah. Where they recorded and did all that. So, it was, you know, and, and, and then when I asked Alice, I go, you know much about our, he goes, oh yeah, I've been a lot of time in Detroit playing with, you know, Marvin Gaye. And then I'm like, wow, wow okay. I mean, That's one cool. of my favorite bands yeah. of all time who I've seen live multiple times, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I mean, they literally recorded with, they were basically a punk band punk, until they sure. recorded with George Clinton in Detroit. And like they did a lot of crazy stuff. Well, they were stuff flat with out that. punk when they started. Right. I mean, I did the whole punk. I've seen pretty much everybody in punk during those that time. And uh, yeah. That's cool. I think Alice Cooper was one of the first people I saw in LA when I came out there. I was a, uh, um, but actually not, not at his concert. Just, I was at the Rainbow out. Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which I heard was a very iconic place earlier on and still to this day. Um, but I was having dinner with a friend. The Viper Room. The Vi yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then he comes in. I'm like, dude, this is insane. Alice Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. You I know, I met him a long time ago because he's been playing golf for a long time. And uh, you know, I kind of met him in Vegas early on when I was, you know, a long time ago. And I was like, hey, da, da, da. and so I cont continued to run into him. And then, you know, Alice got super sober a long time ago, and he just. He said golf saved his life because it wow. just, he's, and by the way, he plays almost every day still. That's amazing. Um, that's First group really out interesting. always. Yeah, Boom. really? Yeah. What are, what are some other awesome Alice Cooper moments? Uh, just, I mean, just playing, you know, no one singular, but just always when I play with him, I always quiz him and always, you know, ask him more about, you know, his, his uh, life of music. I'm just really I, curious because yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. this story and, and um, I can't remember if it was if it was true. I think it was true. Uh, but with Alice Cooper, I believe that there was a like moving van that they had him like uh, his poster on the side of it, and they were driving through. And I hope someone can fact check me or something at one point, Spencer. Spencer. <laughs> but but it was Spencer. driving in the middle of like the heat of traffic in New York, and it was like, bumper to bumper, insane, crazy, and. I believe it was his idea to stall out the the truck, like like drop the like do do whatever it did to make it break down right in the middle, and it caused one of the biggest traffic uh, like jams, ever. jams ever. And it was press everywhere, all the news station, everything. But it was his face, Alice Cooper, on the side of this thing, and I was like, that is genius. It is. I you mean, know? it's you know, I mean, it's uh, those, yeah. Well, uh, Shep Gordon was his manager. Still is. Yeah, 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 yeah. it still is. So a lot of that stuff was probably him and Shep coming up with really cool uh, ideas. Yeah, I, I just think like I love people that go outside the box with stuff like that. And you're thinking like- uh, Shep's you outside the box. Yeah. yeah. But to think you'll get millions and millions of dollars of free advertising just breaking down the car in the worst place you could possibly do it. You know? And I think I can say this now. We have an episode planned with Shep. Yeah, that's, I, was gonna, I was just going to throw that in there. I said, he's soon to be. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And- so that whole crew, though, who else did you hang with in that crew? Because I know, I mean, there's so many musicians. Uh, ones that I've hung with a lot. I'm uh, hmm. a lot of the managers and those kind of people. I like Doc McGee, who's managed, you know, Motley Crue, uh, Bon Jovi, uh, Skid Row. I mean, those those were more the guys that I the, and you know, and we'd play with Tico Torres and David Bryan and. Uh, you know, uh, who else did we play with? Uh, Eddie Van Halen over the oh, years. Wow, cool. I mean, and, you know, and they, last week I played with uh, uh, the, the drummer from um, Kings of Leon. Uh, oh, they're yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's like hard to. Rec I mean, you've literally played golf with so many yeah. cool people your entire life. It's yeah. like asking oh, I've, you I've to been recount. blessed for a long time yeah. you know, sure. from the start. You know, I've well, always said that. And I mean, that takes... I avoided work for 40 years. Yeah, right, no. <laughs> How did like, and I, we've never really even talked about this too. How did you first get into golf? Well, you know, my, my grandfather's in the Hall of Fame and my, you know, yeah. my dad was a doctor and we moved to Vegas in 63 and kind of a little bit after we were there, we moved to the Desert and Golf Course, which is now the Wynn Hotel, that, that golf course. And I grew up there and I just, you know, he... You know, my dad always took us out there, and we, I just got after it. Picked it up, had a natural gift. Just loved and it, and just, you know, played a lot of golf. Hell yeah. Still am. Fucking mm -hmm. A. We got to win this tournament. Exactly. Great, yeah. How uh, How's it going so far? 
The tournament. Oh, the tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's dive in. Uh, we got spanked you in did? our afternoon match today. We battled in our first match, but we got spanked in the afternoon. It was, you know. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you get questions about golf all the time. Um, but is there anything outside of golf? Like, did you ever want to become a musician? Uh, or did you ever want to do any nah, I mean, things? you know, baseball was an interest of mine for a yeah. long time. Well, until I was 14, and then I... I quit playing baseball and I told my dad, I said I was going to be a professional golfer on the PJ Tour and wear a brand new golf glove every day. That's awesome. Is that where Dante got yeah. that from? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I mean. My guy. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out Dante. Yeah. That's great. Uh, to, to circle back to Alice Cooper, it was London. It was in London. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So Alice Cooper in London, not It New was York. London. That's okay. Yeah. I mean, he, we know we knew he did it. Yeah. Yeah. But genius. Yeah. And I think Which it was would make sense in London. He might, maybe wasn't as popular, and so he just you know yeah jam up some traffic. Yeah, you know, and I think it's I th what I remember. I mean, it's been a, a decade since I heard this probably, but I think he sold out that concert, and they were struggling to do that. Yeah, and then it just blew it out of the water. And right. well, it's interesting too, though, because it sounds like there was a bunch of reporters and like people there to document the event. Like they knew ahead of time that this was the plan, and like it, it was like the idea was to blow this thing up. Well, it worked. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, you know, Alice Cooper's shows are pretty radical. Yeah. I yeah. don't know if you've ever been to one or not, but. Yeah, no. I, I mean, yeah. I, he had, I mean, the black, I mean. It, yeah, he, yeah. He, I mean, he was one of the first guys that really got into, uh, we'll say, makeup music. Yeah. You know, or Kiss and, you know, he. Yep. Uh, and Ozzy. Ozzy. Yeah. 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 All the, the others, you know. Yeah. I, I'm a huge Ozzy fan. Uh-huh. Black yeah. Sabbath, I have a Black Sabbath <laughs> t-shirt over there I was going to wear, but. Yeah, he's, wear he's great. I actually really like that collab he did with Post Malone too, uh, not too long ago. Oh, I haven't heard it. Yeah, they have a song that they did together and it kind of like, I was I was hearing that. Ozzy or? Ozzy, oh, okay. yeah, with Post Malone. Um, and it kind of like, from what I was hearing, that it revived a, a part of, you know, his you know, career and, and his passion for music again, you know, nice. in a way. So. Nice. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. Music music's a Post Malone thing. looks like half the guy he used to be, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you see how much weight he's lost? Oh yeah, he's he's crushing it, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks and so it, good for him. He looks good. He's he you know, he's been killing it too. Like a lot of success for that guy. He's a talented, talented dude, man. Yeah, he's from Texas. Yep. Dallas area. Yeah, he's yeah, he's skilled. Yeah, yeah. I think he, we've seen him at uh, Coachella. Yeah. Um but yeah, everybody man. says it couldn't be nicer too. That's what I hear too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild man. But uh, yeah, so what, where were we at before too? It was a uh, uh, baseball, and then baseball, and you know, and then I just quit that, and I've, you know, I was skiing, you know, a lot of days of season because we had a house in Santa Valley growing up, and then I quit all that, and I just, I've been pretty much golf for. Yeah. Have you ever lost the passion for it in any point, or is it? Well, uh, you know, over 40 years, um, I would say the fire has gone to, you know, a light burn a few times, yeah. but that was, you know, due to me. But then I, you know, found ways to fire it back up and uh, I, I, it was m more due to, uh, I would get a little distracted and then like all of a sudden I was like, what am I doing? And that's yeah. like, you know, kind of, you know, wood go back to woodshed and like, okay, we got to work on my golf game and then you know, get distracted with, like, I'm going to help you know, own a restaurant and like, what the fuck are you yeah. doing? <laughs> You're yeah. not a chef. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, but stuff like that could get you a little distracted. And uh, so then I would, you know, like snap out of it. And, but, uh, you know, but it's, it's been, it's been, yeah. uh, golf's been. Well, you also, have or had the record for the lowest round of golf ever, right? Well, or a tournament score? 72 hole score, which was 254, which I did in 03. And I had it from 03 to, I believe, 18 when uh, uh, Justin Thomas broke it. Damn it, Justin. Right? He buried <laughs> the last hole to beat me. Wow. I mean, that's so that's a 15 year record uh -huh. of the best. Like lowest tournament score ever. ever. Yeah. I, I mean, got the second lowest. <laughs> right. Well, now, there you yeah. go. <laughs> I mean, that is so fucking cool. How do you? Were you just in the zone so hard that you could just? You know, it was, fu it was funny. It's like the week before, I you know, I, for two weeks I've been putting on this new machine. And I was like practicing with it, and I was like, you know, I'm feeling really good. And the week before, I played really good and finished, you know, thirtieth. I was like, man, I'm. 
man, it's feeling really good. I just, and, uh, you know, I got to the term in San Antonio and uh, my girlfriend at the time when she was, I got this new massager and she was giving me like these deep back rubs every morning and stuff. And I went out and just, I mean, I hit it as good as I've ever hit it. Just, I mean, I hit it like, you know, you know that what length that is, <laughs> dick <laughs> length, for over and over. And, I mean, I just hit so many. Pin seeking. Pin seeking. I mean, the first first five I put on my card was the third round. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was Jeez. the first five. And Holy was, crap. crap. And the first bogey was the the um, the 10th hole um, uh, on Sunday. First bogey, 10th hole on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's three days in without a bogey. Yeah. I mean, I. it's so fun. It's like hard to describe playing with you and like watching you play. But for people that are like listening, I mean, it's literally like a machinist, right? It's like watching that ball get so close to that hole from like 200 yards out every goddamn time. It's insane. It's, it's, it's such a treat to play with someone at your level. It's amazing. Well, yeah, thank you. And uh, You saved us on a few holes today, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, you saved us on the last hole, the I first did, match. I did, <laughs> so on hole 18, I had a bogey, but I stroked, so I parred, so we tied the hole. Oh, okay. yeah. wow. So I was, I was like, nice. bomb my drive, laid up with a six, hit it on the green, or hit it just short of the green, and then two-putted, but there's... I contributed for a little bit. I, yeah, you, you know. did. You contributed in the second match, too. No, oh, Even though you. we got spanked. Yeah, we got crushed. But we got three more matches, so we can redeem ourselves. Yes, we do. That's I'm great. excited for that. Mm -hmm. I want to pop out and come uh, see you guys play. No, you got to, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, got, we, yeah. we can get you a golf cart. There we got go. juice yeah. here. I'll cruise around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know a guy? <laughs> we, know, we know a guy that yeah. knows a guy. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. So you guys have done 10 member tournaments together mm -hmm. um man yeah do you do 10 more you got that that's um, i hope so we're yeah. talking about doing one next month cabo. cabo do you have a oh you said that your favorite one is the one you're at right um but do you have uh, any favorite memories at a, a certain i mean discovery? el dorado is pretty special for me personally just yeah. for me just from all the things that uh i've done with the melmans and everybody involved there and uh and you know, and I, you know, and I've I've always kind of felt that I was I helped kind of develop these places because I was there from the start. I was at Vaquero from the start. I was here at the start, and you know, we you know idea here and there, and uh, you know, we've all come up with great ideas. And Will has, I have, his dad obviously has, and uh, you know, and Dante has, and uh, we all you know put them in the big pot, and look what we got. One hundred percent, and like that's what we were trying to kind of get at with that earlier, right. Is like discovery is literally all about the people because like you said, you can, you can erect a building and then, but what do you do with it? Right. Who's there? It's, How's it's, yeah. How you run it, who comes, how everybody interacts, how they talk and play. Everybody plays nicely on a whole. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. And then, uh, then when you find these really creative people that help, you know, put the ideas together and facilitate all the feelings and the events and make it happen, I mean, it's magic. I mean, your dad and uh, created, you know, he's created the most, uh, would you say, iconic real estate brand in the world? I mean. Realistically, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's. One, I, one of the biggest and one of the best from. from maybe when it, when it comes to. I don't to know of one for. for Private, yeah, yeah, private residential, yeah, private residential. Golf it's, kind of you know, that I can't. There's no second. There's no one better. And I think that's something too that, like, to stick to that subject of like the people. It's all about the people and who who's there. It's like be, being able to bring like Brock and Spencer right to here, like during this tournament, all the cool people they meet and all the members and their guests that meet Brock and like then they become friends. Right. And then there's like this giant network of people where you're like, yeah, that guy's awesome. I'm so glad you got to meet him. You know, him and his wife are, are great. And then everyone forms their own relationships based off the network. 
and so many cool things come of it, whether it's work or, you know, fun or whatever it is. Um, it's, the, or, it's, the organic, it's the organic advertisement of Discovery Land Company. I mean, that they don't spend, yeah, they don't spend yeah. money on, you know, plastering billboards and all that stuff. It's word of mouth, word of people saying, you know, I had a great time at this place in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho called Gaza Ranch. And so he tells Bob and then Bob tells Jim and, they, you know, and they're like, yeah, we should go up there again. And then that guy goes up there again and all of a sudden he's, you know, five, four million dollars deep into a lot and house and, and his families are up there and, you know, yep. then they're 10 years into it. <laughs> they're wakeboarding. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah. And it just happens. It's just, it is truly an organic thing because it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it just happens that way. Word of mouth, people, you know, you got to go to the, you know, uh, Silo Ridge in New York is this place. It's upstate New York. It's, beautiful in the mutt countryside and then all of a sudden you buy in there <laughs> silo ridge in the fall man i when we got there i only had two days i played 72 holes mm -hmm. 36 each day i was just like in awe of the golf course i'm mm -hmm. like i'm there's like a party going on i'm like i'm gonna be on the course this yeah. is amazing i'm gonna fucking play and now we're going into europe which you know i was yeah helped your dad last year with uh costa terra in portugal and i'm going back this year again for four months and you know, it's just, it's, uh, you know, it's all word of mouth. People, say, you know, and I wear the Costa yeah. Terra logo oh, yeah. around. Yeah. And uh, people say, what's Costa Terra? And then I go into the, oh, it's in Portugal. And, uh, you know, now I got, you know, and now more people are hearing about it. Now people are asking me about it. Oh, yeah. And then it's all of a sudden, oops, you know, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Can Brock and I uh, come crash your pad in, in Portugal? You better. <laughs> That would be fantastic. Yeah, it'd be great. That's one of those. Things you can crash in your dad's pad right at the golf course, <laughs> uh, like we're doing here. We just crash Exa pops his pad. Exactly. Okay. Which, which we do a lot together. We do. We're good, we're good at that. <laughs> we're good at that. We're gonna yeah. do it again for stagecoach. Can be great. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crashing pads. <laughs> yeah. Pat crash pad. <laughs> pad crashers. Pad crashers. Yeah, you're saying, I really it'd be I'm a good really, T-shirt. It would. Yeah. <laughs> pad would. crashers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a, my first couple of years in, in Hollywood was doing that really more than anything. That's all right. Um, yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sur I'm, couch surfing. Yeah, that's, you know, you do, do making it happen. It's a technique. Make, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't help when you're really tall, but you know it is. What I, it get it. Is. I get it. I'm yeah. six three ish. Yeah. I, I yeah. get it. I yeah. surfed a few couches. You know. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, Port School, man. What a great place to. Uh, even it's pop really around nice. Everywhere. It's yeah. yeah, the where we are, it's you know, it's beautiful. It's like being in La Jolla and, and you know that northern San Diego, the terrain and everything in the nineteen sixty three. I mean, it's That's kind cool. of it's not that developed, but developed yeah. enough to make it really cool. And the yeah. weather's eighty one degrees to every day with a little nice little ocean breeze, and it's beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, our buddy Morton just uh, that's his his home base. Even though he travels all over the world all the time mm -hmm. for shows and stuff, but Lisbon. Uh, is he in Lisbon, Will? Is it? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think he was like just outside of Lisbon. Yeah. So we were cash, talking. Cash, cash? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, cash, we were... cash is like uh, their Malibu. Is it? It's like Lisbon's Malibu. You know, Lisbon right. has kind of like, looks like San Francisco. It's got wow. a Golden Gate Bridge. It's got a red bridge. It's got, it, no, it's got cars. a Golden Gate. It's got actual Golden Gate, the same guy that did the one in San Francisco. No, uh, actually. Exactly. Actually. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And I'm then they got like, trolley cars. They, <laughs> they got trolley cars. And yep. I mean, it's like wow. Europe's San Francisco. It really is. And Seriously. I, I freaked out when I saw that. I'm like, they copied us or we copied them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't remember. Same guy. You know, Port Lisbon's one of the oldest cities in the world. And it was never bombed during any of the world wars and stuff. Wow. So it's all pretty intact. That's interesting. Uh huh. That's one thing I always found fascinating about going overseas in Europe is like seeing these places like Croatia or London or where that are still like that building's been here how long and this right. city's still standing right now. Right. Yeah, it, it's a different like it's a whole different f yeah. uh, uh, vibration. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, America, yeah. three hundred yeah. years old, right? Right. Like, so you go there and yeah. it's like, oh wow, they've been here a long time. Uh, yeah. It's like, well, not that long. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the churches out there, just everything, just the, the architecture. Yeah. You look at the right. Liberty Bell. It's like, yeah, that cracked a long time ago. But then you <laughs> you know get over to uh, you know London, it's like, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or Portugal, it's like that statue has been there since. You know, 1,200? <laughs> Jeez. I'm a huge fan of history. Mm -hmm. Huge fan. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot you can uncover. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, me and Will watch these documentaries every now and again, and, and uh, we'll send stuff to each other pretty regularly, actually. But um, just the different archaeological finds over the years, you're like, wait, that, that Have you guys watched the new old? ones about the uh, arch? The uh, what's it? It's about the um, Gobekli Tepe in uh, Turkey. Yeah, twelve thousand years old. Like and, and how it goes down and all. They've only dug up like ten percent of it. Right, and it's yeah. the most advanced, advanced. engineering ever. And mm. it's like, oh no, they were hunter gatherers. They just hunted and gathered. It's like no way. No, yeah. not at all. But some of those, I think it's like an eight-part series, isn't it? It's, it's uh, Ancient Apocalypse is one yes. with Gra Graham Hancock. Yeah, um, yeah. Graham Hancock does all that research. He yeah. goes on Rogan all the time. Right. I mean, just the facts that they're pulling up, like, no, they said this was pre I say No, this is pre it's Yeah. The, the, the chemical, Younger Dryas. Yeah. Dude, I, it's like the only obstacle in that is the institution that <laughs> wrote all the textbooks and is like, no, 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 no we're we, right. We're it's for like, sure but right. But there's more evidence that- No, you're, you're not. Science has showed that your textbooks are not right. And they right. like, well, you know. It's like, that's the point of science is like new discoveries. Yeah. Everything's a but theory until that, it's that disproven. Show, that, that show, that, that thing is, that yeah. doc series has killed me. I'm like, wow. It's just yeah. like- It's eye-opening. Oh, Very, it's yeah. like some of these places, there's their water systems and stuff, how they were draining water and getting it out of there. It's like yeah. so advanced. There's, what is it? There is one, I mean, I can't remember where it was, but it was the entire city was built around that water system that was like filling up and, and like running water and, and heating water and like doing all, yeah. like what is, how is this? It was possible? naturally heating water. Exactly. It's crazy. Thousands and thousands of years ago. Yeah. They just yeah. hunted and gathered though. Yeah. The one in Turkey is <laughs> unbelievable. It's like, yeah. got, you know, 20 stories and it goes down and trickles. It's Crazy. Well, not to mention too, like if you look at the pyramids of Giza and how they're actually built at like a perfect slant. So during the summer solstice or winter solstice or equinox, yeah. I think it's the equinox, yeah. um, you can actually see the difference. Like when the sun shines, Splits right down it's the like, you, yeah. are, you, are you guys afraid of knowledge or like? Just, that wasn't accidental. Not at all. No. Yeah. And some of these places where they're positioned, where like, you know, the fall sun is hitting it different and shining lights in different ways. I mean, that stuff was not accidental. It's It would be a physical impossibility. It, it, right? That's what the guy like, says. He goes, yeah. this is impossible to be accidental. Yeah, and like at Gobe Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, yeah. they literally have like the constellations on the rocks right. that indicate <laughs> what equinox is pointing at during the, it's like, yeah. come on guys. You know. I, I could I, go on the biggest rant about this. I, like, I love, it's like. I like all that stuff. Hell yeah. The clues of the past. Like, we are, we're fucking smart beings. Like, of course there's more stuff. History yeah. was written by the winners. They'd go in, they'd destroy everything, burn all their books. Like, there's so much knowledge lost, right? <laughs> It'd be like if every PGA Tour golfer, like, mm -hmm. their history was completely scratched out. Well, they're trying to do that in this country right now, a rice or a history, whether it's good or bad. I mean, history is history. No, right. It's yeah. like- It can't be all good history. No, it's- And that's all right. You know? We yeah. were once primitive beings and yeah. we're trying to evolve out of that. And there's some rocky stuff along the way, but- uh -huh. We make mistakes along the way and we learn from the mistakes and you keep moving forward, you know, as long as you're yep. not repeating it over and over. And that's why you got to know about the mistakes you made so you don't repeat them. Yeah, for right? sure. Like, for sure. Wild, wild times. Well, we need to just, I just want to, now I just want to watch a documentary. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's cool. Um, okay, so obviously Tommy Armour III, legend. Tell us about Tommy Armour IV. Well, you know, he's uh, my only son and he's, uh, you know, when right when he uh, was decided, he was you know he grew up in Cincinnati and uh, went to Moeller High School there, and um, he's got a great group of friends from Moeller there that I see all the time, different places in the country, and he's a lot of good guys, and you know, and he decided he went to school for a year, and he was like, ah, eh, you know, and he like came home from the first semester, or not came home, he was at home for, and he goes, you know what, I'm 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 not, I'm done with school. And he kind of gave me this rant on, you know, look at all these people in Forbes 500 that, you know, that didn't go to finish college and stuff. And I go, hey, you know, do what you want. 
So we uh, kind of, he kind of, uh, we're going to circle back to uh, Jerry Weintraub again here. And always. So, always. And so we're, you know, we're talking about like, you know, and uh, well, what do you want to do? And he goes, so he caddied for me for that summer and kind of, and he was, you know, he's always been, you know, he's a, you know, a reader He's a vivacious reader. He's been reading, you know, Wall Street Journal since he was, you know, a young kid. And he's just, a, he's always, I mean, that's the only thing that he covets is his book collection. He, and he travels, or he's always has three or four or five books going at a time. And so, so he hit me with like, uh, Dad, uh, you know, Jerry Weintraub in about a year and a half, he, has, he and, uh, Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger are doing a doc series for Showtime called The Years of Living Dangerously. And, you know, my son worked in uh, Dallas on Earth Day, which is, what is it, May 22nd or something is Earth Day. Spencer? I I, want to say May 22nd or April 22nd, one of those days. And... um, April 22nd, and so I went to a couple. He was working for Trammell Crow and the family there, and a huge real estate family in Texas. And so we're working, and he's like, so he was into, you know, Earth, and so he told me about this uh, doc series that they were doing, and it was each episode they got a, a different actor, and, uh, you know, and the that hour was on their, whatever they thought about, you know, for HBO, you said, or for Showtime. Showtime, Showtime. And it was, you know, on the environment. They're whatever different parts of the environment. And so I said, uh, he goes, do you think you could ask Jerry for that? And I go, oh, you know, I, I'd never, literally my whole life, I'd never asked Jerry to put anybody in the movies or, you know, this or that. I mean, very few times that I asked him for tickets, and one of them was for your dad. I was about to say. Like, I mean, yeah. I did not, I just didn't do it just because I, you know, and I probably, but anyway. And so I, and I, I asked him, and he says, oh, you know, we, we're we shooting in a year and a half. Is we, and I go, okay. And so the next time I saw him, I go, you know, my son brought that up. And he goes, oh, Rick, you know, you know how he was. He goes, well, you know, and so I go, okay. So then we we're here at the Madison Club eating on the patio about two months before it. We just finished playing golf. My son, Jerry, and I were sitting there eating, you know, and Jerry was getting half the food in his mouth, and he was talking. He goes, uh, kid, talking to my son, he goes, uh, you need to be in New York in a week and a half, and uh, you're going to work on the on the doc series of the Years of Living Dangerously. And my son, like, almost dropped his fork and stuff, and so, and when we left, and he goes, fuck, you know, he was, like, pumped. And, Hell yeah. yeah. And that got him started in the music, in the uh, show, uh, you know, TV and movie business. And he went and did that. And then Jerry hired him for a couple of projects afterwards. And I knew my son had it when Jerry hired him the second time. Yes. Because, you know, he'll do you the favor the first time, but he won't hire you the second time. And he hired him the third time for uh, two different other projects. So Absolutely. So and he was on his way there. And then Stephen Levinson hired him. And he's been with Stephen Lev and Wahlberg for seven years now. And he's now a... He's a producer for them, and he's a producer, uh, you know, uh, ballers, and he's, you know, so he's. Uh, Those are great guys to be with, you know. And he's, uh, he goes, he runs these meetings for Lev, you know, with HBO, and you know, he's out there, you know, he's like, I listen to him while he's talking. Uh, yeah, this is Tommy Earth. They're calling for leverage, and uh, well, hang on, he's calling HBO, or he's calling this guy, and, you know. So it's like, yeah, we're. Uh, so it's like, it's kind of funny to just kind of like, yeah, you know what? He's like the real deal. You hear a lot of these fuckers talk about, yeah, I'm a movie producer. And, you know, <laughs> definitely, yeah. Yeah. definitely. But, and he's really doing it. And, um, you know, he'll be down here tomorrow. And uh, so- uh, we'll, I'm excited to reconnect with him. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm proud of him. He works his ass off and um, he's, uh, he almost works too hard in my opinion. But, you know, you don't, if you don't work hard, you don't get- are. You can definitely see the work ethic that kind of you've instilled him, instilled in him as his father, and like he definitely has your temperament as well, which mm-hmm. is like a very good thing of like yeah. just being around people and always kind of calm, cool, collected. Like absolutely, yeah, he's uh, he's good people. Absolutely. I'm proud That's of cool. him. Well, we're excited to see him, and we got to meet about 
doing some projects. That's for sure. You know, he's <laughs> down for that. Hell yeah. You ever thought about going into film? TV? You know, yeah. I just, I just, you know, I like it. It's entertaining to me, but I kind of just watch, kind of watch him do it. And yeah, stuff. that's cool. It's, it's a, it's a, yeah, you got it's an acquired taste. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I, you know, it's yeah. entertaining to me, and I, you yeah, know, yeah. obviously, I've been to a lot of filmings of the, all the ocean stuff, all the stuff Jerry did, and yeah. other people, and but it's you know. What was that like for uh, like watching the success of Ocean's Eleven from that early stages and stuff like that? You know, I went to this, uh, I went to the filming of they we did the filming in Vegas and stuff, and everybody they had all the uh, villas at the Bellagio, and mm. I mean, and we were it was quite a show. Well, cool. I, the Jerry assembled like maybe one of the best cast for ever. A film ever, yeah. right? ever. Like I don't think I mean, you, you can know, ever recreate star that. Stu- you can't. Yeah. Really. I mean, star studded. I mean. And they each had a villa down there, and I mean, everybody's playing pranks on everybody. I was everybody. about to say they oh. fucking pranked each other all the time, man. <laughs> all the time. I mean, they were they were at it pretty good. <laughs> That's and, some of uh, my favorite stuff uh, hearing about, it is, especially George, because it sounds like he's kind of the, the ringleader. Right, all of it. right. Um, George is a big prankster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's always uh, the next one you hear is always a good one. Yeah, he's got a he gets that devilish grin, and you know he's <laughs> getting it on. Yeah, yeah. And then I heard, I think we were talking about that with, was it with Craig? Uh, with Craig? Yeah, about how uh, if he pranks you, you don't want to prank him back because he'll just retaliate 10 times. Harder. He'll keep coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty mm-hmm. great, man. <laughs> he got Jerry when they were doing like their uh, hand, or footprints in the Hollywood Walk of Fame, like with the stars and all that. He like <laughs> made it extra small. Yeah. And like Jerry couldn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> made the shoes extra small. Right, right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, Pretty the, classic. Oh, man. I pulled it on Georgia. We went to a basketball game in Dallas and uh, I had the Todd Wagner, who's uh, partners with Mark Cuban, one of the owners of, mm. of uh, the Mavericks and stuff. And I said, okay, at halftime, work, you know, George was like, I want to say 44, 43 then, or 34. And I said at halftime, we're going to say, you know, because they put them on the, the teletron, Jumbotron. Jumbotron, and like yeah. everybody, oh, yeah, right. and so at halftime, I said, I want you to put up there, happy 50th birthday, George Clooney. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and they, they put it up there, and he's like, and I went, <laughs> that's, so that's actually really good <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> then he was that's at Dantana's a, 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 about a week and a half two weeks later after that and I had Craig take him a birthday cake and said happy 50th on it so you, got, you got Craig involved too yeah oh my god that's great I love hearing that oh man your prank's coming next no, oh, no. We're, we're, Get your little exploding golf ball on the course tomorrow. That That's would actually be really funny, dude. <laughs> right? Or do those exist where you can like hit oh, it yeah. and like it, paint it explodes? Goes, <laughs> big smoke ball. Powder. Yeah. They become big. They're big powder exploders. We got to get that. You can do colors too. Yeah. yeah or not get that. We got to not yeah. get that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'd be the one to hit it. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever played with uh, glow in the dark balls like at night? In yeah. Cabo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. Do you know that Discovery Land Company buys more glow in the night golf balls than anybody? Are you kidding? Really? Oh, yeah. I had no idea. Because, you know, every, awesome. every property uses them. Oh, shit. That's There's cool. There's something new every day. I mean, <laughs> Monday night, there'll probably be glow, you know. I mean, Monday. Tomorrow night, you know. At the party. Yeah, there'll be a, some feature of glow hitting glow ball. There we go. You'll, you'll yeah. see it tomorrow night. I mean, That'd be awesome. Be, Oh, there, the, there's the glow balls. Fucking a. What, uh, what do you have coming on the horizon that we can look out for? You know, of uh, me, I'm just a lot of discovery stuff. I just, your dad just told me today I'm going to Dubai in a few weeks, so I'm going to go. I've never been. I'll be at the project there, so I'm going uh, for the envisioning, uh, like the fourth through the eighth. Dante and I are gone. Oh, oh that's man. cool. Yeah, that sounds be a, so fun. You know, it's twenty Great. hours there. And, you know, so it's. I'm sure we'll like. You know, we'll be just waking up by the time we get on the plane to come back. Right. But uh, so we're going to go do that. And then um, what else do I have coming? I got Kevin Washington's 50th birthday in Cabo in May, early May. And, um, you know, Pins and Fins, April. Yep. Stage goes. Pins uh, and Fins. Yep. And then, uh, then I go to Portugal, May 28th for, through September 30th. I'll be in Portugal all summer and 
waiting for you guys to come over. Yeah, there we go. Did, traveling, you love traveling, huh? Well, it's, you know, it's a necessity. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't, I, I, I really, when I travel, I don't think about it. I've got this numbness I go into. And, you know, people ask me, how was, how was your trip? And I go, plane took off and landed. <laughs> <laughs> because everything else is irrelevant. I mean, because right. I've got such a, you know, I wear headphones. I kind of read stuff. I take stuff. I put stuff on iPads. I got movies. And so, I mean, you know, I've, I, I know what I'm doing. I, to me, I don't care if I sit in first class or coach. It's the same module sitting. Get yeah, through it, yeah. I mean, that many years on the tour, right? All that traveling, yeah, yeah. Is it, you I got mean, it. It's just it's a mindset that I could. I go traveling, dink, and I just kind of shut off. Kind of. I love that when I'm solo, you know. Hell yeah! Yeah, there's. I'm. I'm thinking. Um, just about Dubai still. Is is there anything that you've seen out there? Because they've gotten like I've never been to Dubai, and, so I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I hope you enjoy it. Man. I've never been either, but uh, I've got friends yeah. that live out there. And, they say and it's great, incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, everything you see about it is like, you know, yeah, glitz and glam and brand new and uh, uh, reaching up way in the sky. Yeah, but, there's yeah. some pretty crazy stuff out there. So uh -huh. I mean. Go check out the you know tallest building in the world, and maybe I want to do the indoor snowboarding. Yeah, that looks cool. That looks really cool. <laughs> I would love that. Just uh, like looping the thing all day. Well, when you come and do it, I'll cheer you on. <laughs> I'll have a hot coffee for you when you get to the bottom. I love it. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, hell yeah. Thank you so much, Tommy. My pleasure. There is uh we could sit here for another four hours, but we have golf to win. Yes. And uh why don't we do a little bit more in Cabo? Let's do that. There we, go. there we go. We'll get somebody to come on with us. and uh, Yeah, we'll get a whole crew. Yeah. I love it. We're cool. All right, man. All right, Tommy, boys. It's a pleasure, man. Thank My you. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for watching Studio 22. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow our socials at Studio 22 Podcast.